Hey guys, it's Brandy. I'm back again to show you how I made this top sliding CPAP storage nightstand. Come on and I'll show you how. So I've been working on our primary bedroom and this is the before. We had two nightstands that did not have drawers and we had a bed that needed some revamping a little bit. My husband has a CPAP and I thought it really important to find a way to incorporate storage for the CPAP that will allow him to use the CPAP at night and then allow us to put it away in the day. I do have free printable plans. If you go to the link in the description of this video, you can find them. I will also include links of all the things used in this build and some of the sizes and cut sizes as well. So I'm starting with half inch maple plywood that I had cut down a little bit smaller in order to get at home and then I cut it down to the size needed for the side panels at home. I put some pocket hole screws in there and I'm screwing it into poplar pieces that will act as the legs of the side panels. Now one thing to note here is I'm using two extra pieces of plywood there to bump that side panel flush with the leg so that when I add my drawer slides later I can just do it directly onto the side panel. I did cut the plywood about a half inch shorter than the poplar legs so that I would get the look of kind of feet on the furniture. Now I'm pocket holing the cross pieces, which are one by two and one by three poplar pieces that I picked up at Lowe's. Now I knew that I really wanted these drawers to be inset in this design, so I'm being very careful as to where I'm putting my cross pieces and the spacing. The bottom space is seven and a half inches apart, and then the second drawer was five and three quarter inches apart. That will allow me to use a one by eight and a one by six to add as my face frame and it will slide right into that space, no problem. I'm just using Craig one and a quarter inch screws for that. Now I'm gonna add this really thin spacer to the back just to square up the whole frame. I'm not gonna be building a back for this table because I need airflow for the CPAP and so I'm gonna just add a couple cross pieces to keep the whole thing square. Now I'm gonna start working on the CPAP cubby and I'm just using a one by eight and a one by six to make an L shape with pocket holes. And then I'm sliding that in and pocket holing it to the side frames and that creates the cubby. Okay, so the CPAP sits down inside there quite nicely. Obviously, you have to take into um, consideration the type that you have. I know there's a lot of different CPAP machines out there, but the hose comes out right here. And so the idea is for it to go through this hole. But I did not think about, there's a plug right there, and it actually has a little thing that goes onto the plug, and I might be in trouble because of that. So I'm gonna go get that and try it out. I left a little gap down here for wires to come up through if we needed to, or charging, or whatever. Um, so we're gonna try this out and see how it does. Okay, so here, <laughs> I didn't take this into account. Now, I need to put it towards the middle so he can pull his water tank out and fill it up. So I think what I'm gonna do is get one of my spider drill bits, and I am gonna drill a hole right through there for the wire. This is one of my favorite spider tools. Now I know it looks like my hair is close, it's not, it's just the angle of the camera. But this is a hole saw and ejects the core that you cut really easily. So I love these tools, these bits. Now that I've got the hole, I'm gonna notch it out so that his plug can fit in there well. Now I'm gonna make the drawers and I'm just using some one by sixes and cutting the frame to size. And then I'm using an eighth inch luau plywood piece panel for the bottom and I'm just nailing it on with some brad nails and some glue. I don't expect that these drawers will be holding anything super heavy and I just want them to fit and hold clutter. Here's a tip for drawers. Normally drawer slides are half an inch for each slide. So you wanna make sure that your drawer is one inch smaller than the hole where they will be going. So for instance, mine is a 24 inch wide piece where I need the drawer to sit. So I'm cutting the drawers to be 23 inches wide and 17 inches deep. So the top drawer is a little bit shorter. So I'm using a one by four for the frame of that one. And I used a one by six for the frame of the bottom drawer. Now I'm gonna go ahead and build the second nightstand, which will be on my side. And I thought I would include this footage because it's another way that you can assemble the frame. 
Before, I did the side panels first and then did the cross pieces. And on this one, I did the face frame first and then I'm attaching the sides and then the back. Both work as long as you're on a level surface. Now I'm gonna go ahead and attach the drawer slides. And I picked up this easy drawer slide jig from Craig Jig. And it was quite nice. You can attach it to the frame and then the drawer slide slits on that and you know that you have it level and you can screw it into your side panel. Then you can flip them around and that's what your drawer sits on and you can attach the slide to the drawer then. So they're a pretty cool handy tool. It can be done without it as long as you have something straight underneath and you have a level as you're attaching your drawer. You don't need the Craig piece. Now I'm gonna assemble the smaller drawer that goes on top with the one by fours and I'm doing it the exact same way. I'm using pocket holes on two of the sides and screwing it into the front and back pieces of the drawer. And then I'll be brad nailing the one eighth inch piece to the bottom with glue. Something else to note with drawers, you wanna make sure your pocket holes are on the outside of the drawer so that you don't see them when you're actually using, pulling the drawer in and out. It's hidden by the frame. Now I'm attaching the drawer slides for the second drawer and I'm still using the Craig Jig panel. If you don't have this, you can use a level to hold your slides straight. And usually slides come with their own screws, so I'm using those to screw into the side panel itself. Now I'm flipping the Craig Jig um, over so that it'll hold the drawer in place and I'm attaching the slide in the front onto the drawer. Now I'm going to add the slide, one of the ball bearing slides, just to the side top piece of the nightstand. This is where the top is going to sit and slide out. This is the idea that I came up with so that it can be accessible so that we can get to the CPAP and things in the cubby. Now I didn't get very much footage of building the top, it's basically just a 24 inch panel that I cut to size and added trim around the top. Next I just set the top on the slides and I didn't put the side trim on yet so that I could make sure and center the top piece just right with the slides. I pulled, there's a little hook on the bottom side of these slides and so you can pull out or extend the slide and then I screwed it directly into the top panel. I'm still just using the screws that came with the slides. They're the perfect size and work really well. Now I'm testing them out and now that they work, I'm gonna go ahead and add the side trim so that you don't see the slides. I also went ahead and added the drawer faces and those are just poplar pieces that I got, one by six and one by eight, and I screwed them in from behind. Now, the way that you attach a drawer face for me, usually, especially when they're inset, is I pin nail them onto the drawer frame and then open it and screw it in from behind. Now I'm gonna go ahead and stain and I am using Sun Bleach by Verithane and Summer Oak by Verithane and I'm mixing them equal parts to one to one. And that's how I get the color. I tried out a few and I really liked the way this mix looked. So it was light and airy, which is what I was going for in this space. Once it was mixed, I went ahead and stirred it up really good and then I just went ahead and stained everything with the grain. For each part of staining, I like to go with the grain. It allows it to absorb, gives it a nice uniform look and ends up looking really pretty. Now I did have an extra piece of maple ply which I cut to the exact opening for that top cubby. I went ahead and opened the top to stain it, as you can see there, and then slid it in. I'll see if I can get a better visual for you guys of what that looks like. I forgot to record that entire process, but it sure is nice that the top slides open in order to stain inside that cubby. <laughs> and this is what they look like, all finished. Now they're in the bedroom, I'm gonna go ahead and install the CPAP. So I'm bringing the plug in through that hole that I cut earlier and attaching the hose from behind. And that gives it enough room to wrap around the bed, so that he can use it at night. He will leave the top open when the CPAP is in use and then close it during the day. 
Now I'm going to go ahead and install the front drawer pulls and I am pulling out the 3 16th mock blue bit by Spider. These are my favorite bits and this one works really well with drawer pulls. Now the way I center my handles is by using a square and I make sure that it is equal spaces from the edge on both sides and that will center your pull. And then I use a pencil and mark where the handle is going to be and then drill the hole and screw it in from behind. Then I'm using this little level to make sure the bottom one is equally spaced and level as I screw in my holes on that side. And that's it, they are all done. I have a cubby on my side as well, both of them have cubbies. I use mine for medicines and other unsightly things that I don't want out on my nightstand so that everything looks clean and uniform during the day. I can just close it up and it's all done. He's been using it for a while now. It gets plenty of circulation because it's left open and it hasn't caused any problems with the hose wrapping around him and the bed. We did pull out the tissues and got another cord extension port that had some USB options on it. That ended up leaving a lot more space in here so that it can get the air that it needs. And he ends up keeping his hose right there, which is fine because it's hidden behind all of the pillows. So it's much better than it was before. I will have a video coming out on this gridded wall that I finished in this space and it's pretty simple. It really classes up the place. I'm actually really in love with it. Anyway, thanks for watching. As always, you can find me on TikTok, on Instagram, here on YouTube, and on my website. Hope to see you again next time.